Greetings, my friends. I am Mr. Mocha Lover, of course, and thank you for rejoining me here in TNO, playing as that beautiful sovereignty of Western Russia. So, we're kind of in the final eight. We have one over here, two, three, four, of course, but like five for countries, six, seven ish, maybe the final seven, about who will rule over Russia someday. I guess we could throw in Muscovine as well, but we'll see what happens. But let's do a, a focus first. So, we can do the partisan problem. We did this stuff about the economy. We can still do stuff about military stuff and industry, but let's do this one, the partisan problem. While we defeated our enemies, we didn't kill every single last one of them uh, and their supporters. Unfortunately, this has resulted in a number of partisan holdouts that stretch from the Archangelsk in the north to Samara in the south, a patchwork of fortresses, bandits, and leftover disenfranchised soldiers, all believing in a myriad of ideologies and owing loyalty to one man or another. Communists, fascists, and even radical democrats are present in these holdouts. Even if they weren't raiding our ca caravans, attacking our villages, who profess their loyalty to us, or slaughtering soldiers when they get a chance, they would be they would be presenting an issue. But right now, they're rampant. We have to deal with this problem as soon as possible to ensure that the Tsar's rule is secure. So, let's continue on and have a good time. So, a couple comments, including is that apparently I'm doing pretty well with our economy. Um, we have a massive amount of GDP because we invested all of our liquid reserves into it. Right now, we have no debt, which is good. We only have, we have very little liquid reserves, which is fine for now, whatever. GDP is looking amazing. We are spending a ton on civilian, uh, spending just it's only nine percent but it's a ton like out of 600 billion 647 billion look what happened here something rearranged something oh the caucuses are getting attacked uh we're still spending about we're spending a ton on construction holy cow not much of military spending my type overthrown by arab administrators cool ironic it could save the nation from death but not whose administration ah oh, good and reserves is only 89 billion dollars only 89 billion as a reminder, more GDP equals more income, which is something that we really want. We got a good amount of stability, a good amount of war support. We have a little bit of manpower. Ooh. Oh, never mind. It's gone. Um, so, another comment from yesterday said, Probably I don't need to cut the military budget anymore, especially since it does affect our recruitable population factor. So, let's not cut the budget too much more. I mean, I probably still will, maybe a little bit, but we'll see what happens. Our deficit's looking pretty good. Liquid reserves has just gone up as well. We have 436 million. Not bad. I like that. Uh, what we could do is increase a civilian, or increase the construction budget so we can get some more consumer goods, which actually might be really good for us to do. Uh, Muscovine and the Azad defeated Caucasian. Oh. Um, interesting. Von Gablenz. Cool, and this is... Oh. Lubov. Okay, cool. The Great Caucasus Revolt, Problem with the Partisans. If you'd like to read Problem with Partisans, go right ahead. Cool, and let's see. Yeah, reduce consumer goods. How much consumer goods do we have? 16, that's not great, but we're actually doing pretty well with building more and more and more, so I'm actually okay with that for now. Once that one is done, we could probably continue to do that right there, even though we could focus on a navy. We'll see what happens. And then, you know what? We might consider building up some more infrastructure, actually. Put up where we have a lot of steel, oil, stuff like that. If you want to read the, but the Great Caucus Revolt, go right ahead as I'm clicking on, indus on infrastructure. It's always a good thing to do. Uh, cool. With the caucuses, will the caucuses finally be free? Probably not. Cool. Oh, do something over here. Invest in construction. We're not going to do that yet. Oh, we got other things we want to do. Let time go on as we're going to do our next focus. Root them out. Conservative democracy, authoritarian democracy, or offers of amnesty. Let's go through them out. While the old adage says that if you can't beat them, join them. Unfortunately, the partisans that plague the hinterland of our empire to be haven't heard of one yet. And so it is with a heavy heart that we must begin to root out the resistance to our rule through the use of Okra use the, through the use of the Okrana collaborators and turncoats, as well as good old-fashioned military superiority. Luckily for us, each one of these holdouts are as in as much disagreement with one another as they are with our administration, and as such refuse to unite with one another to overthrow our regime that's currently plagued by overextension. We must act quickly and decisively to eliminate these partisans from within our borders before they either for either they or our external enemies take advantage of our temporary weakness. Good idea. Very, very, very good idea. We save low manpower, insufficient resources, which makes sense. Can I actually buy some? That wouldn't be bad. I buy Japan. Uh, I'll help out America. Why not? America doesn't seem so evil right now. Maybe eventually, but not right now. Let's see. Expand welfare programs. We get more stability, even though we don't really need that much more stability right now. Even though two and a half percent would help us out still. Construction, no. Bonus for industry might be good to do. Research, education, uh, industry. Moderately increases GDP. I like that one. Let's see. Let's take a look at, at the economy. So our debt is 175 million. No, it's not. We only have 261. I hate debt, like I said before. So we're gonna keep that down and low. Uh, Deutsche Nation declared war on 
Adi Gia. Oh, that's good. Legionary... Oh, Georgia. Oh, all the revolts are coming out of Caucasian. Anti-tank rifles, cool. So, someone recommended that I also research the one of these middle areas for industry. So, this one. We should probably research this. Gives it more cap and growth. So, let's do that. It was recommended by you guys, so I should do that. Let's see. What else do we have here? Debt is looking good. Oh, yeah, those guys are dead. Total expenditures. Total annual revenue. A little under 10% income rate. That's fine with us. We need to look at this for now. Congolese Republic has defeated a group in the war. Uh, who was our ministers? So, it wasn't that guy. Defeated Legionary Georgia already. So, yeah, I think it was this guy? Was it this guy? Had a government? No, it was Sols Henetsen. So this guy, apparently in our timeline, actually won a Nobel Prize in Literature in the 1970s. So that's actually really, really cool. That was, that was one of the comments that you guys told me about yesterday, which is actually really, really awesome. Uh, let's see. Also, another comment says, you press this red button, which you already did in this episode, to get rid of debt. Press the big red button to get rid of debt. I know, and it's just really, really cool. Really cool. Lower construction. I might raise it up some more. Hmm. Heirs of Babylon, what childish fantasy? If you want to read this, go right ahead. It's an alternative universe in which the Third Reich loses its struggle against the decadent capitalist West and the state of Russia. Wow. After the Fuhrer was cut down by a sniper bullet in 1935. That's kind of cool. If you want to read this, go right ahead. Very cool. What a childish fantasy. Oh. And we keep, keep an eye on this stuff, too. Nice. Industrial equipment's getting along much better. Which one's going to happen next? Poverty rate is doing not too poorly for us. Well, it's kind of bad, but, you know, whatever. 23. Cool. Root them out. Next up, we can do the Emperor's Peace. Through no small effort, of course. And with a little bit of luck, we have managed to pacify the partisans that have been plaguing our nation. Things are quiet for the first time in a long time. Longer than the Emperor can remember, in fact. While our decisions and how to take on partisans will shape the future of our Empire, regardless of how we approach the subject, their threat is over, and now we can turn to the other issues that are affecting our administration, such as an administration that isn't supposed to deal with its vast swaths of Western Russia that we have earned for ourselves, and the right folks are S. Nami Bog. Stability, political power, and reduces the current administrative strain on our empire. A truly great thing. Alright, so what can we do down here? Uh, construction, expand welfare programs, poverty rate. Let's get rid of that. I hate. I don't like poverty. Poverty doesn't seem very bueno. And scientific research. Uh, increases GDP. Moderately increases. Let's get more GDP. It might cost us money, but you know what? Let's get rid of that. Oh, there's some lag. Something's happening. Happy 1968, though, my friends. It's going to be a good year. Gibraltar Dam officially finished. Congratulations. Oh, does that mean that there's going to be less of a sea here? Is Albania, or what was known as Albania, would touch eventually the boot of Sicily? Or Sicily, Italy. Hmm. Let's see. Debt, 350 million. All right. Goodbye. No more debt. Easy, right? Oh, look. 6.9% growth. Nice. Other... Ex oh, other ex what is that? Other expenditures. Uh, Where's that coming from? Was that... What we were... Huh. I mean, our deficit's more than fine. We're making enough money. We have no debt. Civilian construction's budget. More resource efficiency game. More daily political power. That's not bad. More construction speed, which is actually pretty good. But, eh, we can kind of wait. 80 factories, we're getting there. 1.85 political power a day. Uh, actually, you... Come back over here. I don't know why you're separated. Go ahead and train if you need it, which... I think we're already there, which is good. Good, good, good. What do we need for supplies? We're doing pretty well on everything, except planes. Yeah, we're actually doing pretty well. Also, we're, I think we're getting some APCs as well. Instead of motorized, I think APCs are just going to cut it a little better than a, than motorized, so... Let's see, infantry... Ah, there's APC stuff. We still probably want to get more armor for these guys, so let's do that. No templates for APCs, or improved anti-air for the back matter. We have no manpower, though, so tank-wise... If we replace this with an APC, the armor goes up by just a little bit more. 89... Multiple battalions. They replace them all with APCs. The armor eventually becomes 97. Piercing is still a ungodly amount. Which I really don't like. By doing this, it, we might not be doing much of a favor for us. Hmm. I mean, we'll train one. But we'll see what happens. I think we can still pierce, us, pierce our own selves, which is really bad. I'm just trying to get just more armor. Piercing abilities is just so good. I also do have a cup of tea here. Nice herbal tea to keep us good and warm. Ah, the Emperor's Peace. Good. Go ahead and do worker stuff. So, an Empire Reborn. With the Partisans taken care of... Oops, my apologies. I did not mean to click Enter. But with the Partisans taken care of and the government functional, 
Following the Congress of Vologda, it's clear that our internal political situation has been dealt with and the sovereignty for the first time civilized in its positions both internally and throughout the West of Russia, Western Russia. It hasn't been an easy process, but with the partisans either dead or otherwise dealt with, and our pol politicians cooperating with one another in a functioning multi-party government, it seems that the internal issues uh, that have been previously been crippling our sovereignty have been dealt with. There haven't been any ex skirmishes or in political infighting for quite some time, and the people are finally beginning to believe that not just the Tsar is here to say, or to stay, but the government and, his, and he presides over has the best interests of all of Russia at heart. Cool. Unlocks decision to exert influence in the southern Urals, which is a good thing. Uh, more defense. That'd probably be good to do. 64. Let's grab this one first. We have more breakthrough. That'd be nice. Cool. Make sure to do... Oh, we still have no manpower. God dang it. Uh, let's see. Budget-wise, since we did get some of this back. Let's see. Deficit? Still not bad. A little bit of uh, that. I could slash military spending, but it's so small compared to civilian spending and construction. Doesn't really matter. And we get... Annual revenue, a little, a little more than three million, three billion. I think we're doing pretty well. I could slash it, but that doesn't really matter. Civilian spending, I could actually it's fifty-nine billion. That's all. It's a lot of spending. Not gonna lie. Mm, I could uh, moderately increases GDP. I don't think I have any other use for. It. You know what? I haven't done this one yet. D just do it anyways. Why not? I haven't done it yet. So one, two, three. Just keep building, building, building. We're getting more military factories, which is nice. Uh, economy, which. Okay. Oh, did oh no. Oh, I did not. Did I not click it? Whoops, my bad. Going. Oh, now we only have eighty-one million. Whatever. It's fine. I think it'll be worth it. I gotta keep remembering that this doesn't close automatically, which kind of is. It's kind of annoying, but whatever. Ah, good stuff. Good stuff. Good stuff. I'm feeling pretty good. We have 100% stability. Good amount of that stuff. We need more tanks, obviously, but mm, it's going to be an issue. Yeah, I really don't like that. That's so much piercing that these guys have that we can just get pierced probably by everyone else, which I really don't like. We're doing that. Let's see, down here, we got more resource efficiency gain, which is great. I wanted, I did want to grab this, so we have at least one synthetic refinery, so we can improve what we already have and make sure we get at least two more, probably, which would be nice. Yeah, because our current infantry divisions... They have... Actually, 41 piercing. That's not bad. That's actually better than what I thought. I was just looking at this. Because I guess we did throw an anti-tank. We removed anti-tank. Wait. Piercing goes up. Wait. Support anti-tank lowers our... I have confusion. Confusion. If you want to read this, go right ahead. Long live the Emperor and his government. Forever onwards. Now, we can finally focus on the military stuff, but we're going to do this stuff first so we get some more stuff over there. Uh, there's nothing that will help us improve our military, so reestablishing contacts, ready for diplomacy, connecting our realm. Industry was not the only casualty of our long period of chaos. Infrastructure has taken a serious hit. Roads and railways in particular took a beating, dramatic decreasing of the mobility of the average person and completely isolating much of rural Russia. Sustained economic development is impossible without the ability to quickly move people and resources over long stretches of land, especially in countries as spread out as ours. Railroads for freight will be the top priority, with civilian transportation not far behind. Eventually, Russia will be as well connected as it always was. Our citizens will be able to travel with ease from Viet... Skiet... Uh, Sketivakar to Samara and wherever else, wherever else they please. Exert influence. The race for the Urals. Sure, why not? I'm not sure what this is going to do. Propaganda programs. Stability or support. Eh, that's not bad. The race for the Urals. If you want to read that, go right ahead. A new theater. Keep political power. We will triumph over our Siberian rivals and integrate another part of shattered Russia into our growing nation. Well, uh... Oh, increased presence in Orenburg. Where's Orenburg? Is that Orenburg? Looks like I got caps lock on. Oh, you're down here. Okay. Let's see. Increased investment in the Euro League. Huh. The region thanks to the station escaped various efforts of different groups. Let's see. Neutral, neutral, Euro League. Gaining influence over the Euro warlords, preventing our eastern opponents from establishing a sphere of influence in the region is necessary. Increase investment? Yes. Oh god, is this fearing like in uh, Victoria 2? Oh god. Military intervention. I can go to war with them. I mean, would that be worth it? How strong are these guys? Okay, so I know they're out. They, well, they're not allied. Stand for something greater. Uh, military, 5 to 7. Um, yeah, no. I, we might just go to war with them. Uh, decrease investment, increase investment. Current influence. 
Uh, declares war on both countries. Well, if we move quickly enough through here, they shouldn't be able to hurt us, right? If that's the case, you know what? We're going to do like this. You guys come here. And then you guys do that. I'll put you guys under here, actually. And you both come here and help just, like, crush them quickly. Just get it over with, right? Initiate propaganda. Give you guys some time to move around. That's totally fine with me. We have no manpower, but whatever. Alright, let's see. So this is the Euro League. Three, two, one. Oh, we have 75 days. Okay, that's fine. Current influence, opponent's influence, zero. Oh, that's not good. Opponent has more influence. Eh, whatever. How is this looking? We got plenty of political power, though. It'll be down May 13th, so that's going to be a while before we get that military factory. Civilian factories aren't too tough to make, I guess? No, they still are. They still are. So you have 41 piercing. Our motorized hat need actually need to be bigger. 45 piercing. Our elite infantry are what? 45 piercing. Okay, so I was, I was kind of worried for no reason. These tanks will be really good, hopefully, as long as they don't get pierced. That was just my biggest deal. I just don't want them to get pierced. Now, if this puts us at war with these guys, that's not going to be good for us. Probably. But it might be good. You never know. A little bit of lag here and there, whatever. Uh, we just got to wait quite a while. We got a lot of influence in there. Influence is seven. Their influence is rapidly going up, which is not good. Decisions, yeah, we know. Connecting all realm, good. Invest in Russian business. Businesses, as uh, by extension, their own owners, have had a hard time in life over the past few decades. But death of this guy, if you want to read it, go right ahead. They first lost their control over their own livelihoods under the scourge of socialism and secondly lost their lives under the fire of German bombs. Our state should invest in the businesses that have opened and endured in our lands, while also helping those who have skills and means to open new businesses to feel safe and secure to do so. As we help businesses thrive and still more open themselves with our support, we hope to see the economic strength of our citizens and government secured more thoroughly than ever before. Good, good, good. More propaganda? Yeah. I wish we had more than what we could do with just propaganda. Monthly rate of 8.5, that's not bad. Six? Yeah, I think poverty is probably going to take it the cake next. Yeah. Oh, well, that's pretty close, too. I'll do the research. 50, 152 versus 154. That's not bad. So doing pretty well. Not bad, not bad. We are good to go. Let's go, 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 please. If not, that's okay. You know, we can wait. Uh, economy? Uh, debt? No debt. No debt. Good. Ha over half a billion in liquid reserves. It's not enough. Even though there's no really point for me to hold on to too many liquid reserves, apparently. Because, uh... It really doesn't do much for us, actually. We could invest more in construction, use 10% more, cost 5% more, less consumer goods, more construction, cost modifier. We already spent $25 billion on construction costs. You know what? I, we could probably do it, probably fine. Multilayer steel ceramic composites, cool. We actually might want to invest in better planes, too, actually. Because I love investing in my, you know, planes and ships and stuff like that, but... Uh, we need jet engines? Yeah, let's do that first. That's probably good. Ooh, political thought. More stability, more political power. The popularity of radical ideologies shall decrease. Sure. Now, this isn't radical. This is just normal good stuff, you know. NTS, it's not radical at all. Invest in Russian businesses, good. Let's reevaluate the armed forces. The Imperial Army has served its empire with honor and distinction in these terms, times of chaos, but the way in which it operates will need to be examined once more if we want to unite Mother Russia. Wresting control from the socialists, dissidents, and the fascists of the East will only be possible in one instance. If a brave men are given the supplies and tactical direction of, from higher ups to see, succeed on the battlefield of Russia, there's nothing that can stop the Imperial Army from marching its way eastward. Modernization is on the tongues for the best men, but how to achieve the end is contested. Shall we hold to the traditional values or ideas of our forefathers on the battlefield, or shall we innovate and find new ways to confront our enemies? Only the arguments among our generals are resolved will we be able to tell. Shall we finally bring our equipment to the standard of the rest of the world. In a word, yes, it is only a matter of time. Good. Something just happened there. What happened? Oh, we researched something. Cool. You could probably use that too. Better RPGs? Yes. Who needs RPG 1? When you can have RPG dose. Hmm. Wise words. Very wise words. Now, I don't know if Germany will ever attack us. Honestly, with Burgundy, look at so big. Burgundy's massive. I love it. I really want to play as them. I will someday, though. What is that? Shadow State? Hmm. What is that? Education crisis. Legion loyalty. The bunkers. French state looks. Oh, who are you, Pierre? Huh. The OAS economic meltdown. How's Switzerland doing? 
The cash must flow, of course. Fortress Switzerland, which is normal. Black market's trading moderate. Oh. Discredit opponents? Eh. Not sure about discrediting them, especially if I'm going to go to war with them very... Like, now. Are they allied with anybody? I hope not. Uh, nope. Eh, nope, which is a good thing. <coughs> Excuse me. Jojen of Vorkuta, huh? Staring down the devil. Eyes on the border. Not bad. Ooh. We can, oh, we can't do anything there. How many more days? They are receptive to the other people, which is fine. Is it pause? Oops, I paused it. My bad. We got 10 days left. Budget-wise. Spending. Even Maybe even more spending might be good. Only less than a, bi oh, less than a billion. That's fine. Man, when I put my cash reserves into... Or liquid reserves. Liberal victory in Canada. Cool. Liberalism in the philosophy of our time. When I put all my liquid reserves at one time at last episode... It just gave us so much GDP. That was so awesome. I want to do that again. Alright, let's go. Like, how many days? Two days left? Good. This shouldn't be a problem, but we'll see what happens. A little laggy. And can we go? Can we go? Go, 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 go. There we go. Reevaluate the armed forces. Boots in, in Siberia by 1972. If you want to read that, go right ahead as we read the next one. So, learning from the Western Reclamation. Oh, it was a glorious triumph for the Emperor and a hard blow against the sorry of these former to fertile lands. Cool. Our Imperial Army and the shrewdness of our generals have are two large pieces of the success that we have thus found in retaking Russia. Ooh. Ooh. Uh, we must examine our successes in these conflicts along the conflicts that came before. As distasteful as the thought is, we must look for our most obvious shortcomings. No armies without weakness. And ours is by no means an exception to this unfortunate reality. Though finding our strengths and weaknesses, uh, we can maximize the former and minimize the latter to God willing create the large, strongest fighting force the land of Russia has ever known. Good. So, uh, also, these guys are going to war on these guys, so we'll see what happens. We should probably do a pretty okay, because it doesn't seem like they can really stand up to us too much. Good. Go in, take as much as you can before the enemies do. Ah, uh, I love it. Oh, what can we do here? Nothing. I really wish we could raise our conscription level more. You know what, initiate propaganda? That's fine. It's only 15 million. Hey! Look at that. Beautiful, my friends. Beautiful. Go ahead and take it, Ordenberg. Ah, oh, gotta love the motorized. They have no armor, though. That's okay. Good. Now they should capitulate soon. Yes, see. There they go. Cool. And we have enough political power to integrate everything here. Now, people might not like that, but up there's. Cool. I'm return you guys to this side. That'd be great. Because we'll probably have to fight the people in the Urals next. Ural Military District. They did not get the Urals. We did. Sucks to be you. And we only have one motorized, which hopefully we get a tank soon enough. Soon enough, hopefully. Um, yeah, fighting up here is going to suck. It's going to really suck. I'm not sure where to send these guys, though. Maybe right here. It'd, it'd be better if we could actually, like, have more than one division who is sort of speedy. So, but it is what it is, you know. 91 factories, not bad. Keep building, keep building. Ah, practical industrial administration. Good. Uh, 50% caps growth. Minus 5%. I don't like cap. I don't want less cap. I don't mind less growth. But I don't want less cap. Like, that's that's not cool. Four more days. That'd be good. Basic literacy is coming up pretty fast. Which is awesome. 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 Courage political thought. Good, good, good. And now we're learning from the West Russian stuff. Celebrate the heroes. That's not bad to do. Sticking to our guns. Less division organization, but more recruitable population factor, and a double bonus for land option or new school of thought. Um, more attack. I love that like, I get more population, which we actually need. I don't want to lower my organization, and we don't need any more land option stuff, so I'm probably going to go with new schools of thought up until now. Our Imperial Army has worked. To the credit, with mostly outdated tactics and strategies. The scale of the conflicts to come in a quest to reclaim Russia for the Emperor will only grow, and our ability to fight a war from the largest to the small scale must be fully developed if we are to succeed. To this end, an initial small group of military theorists and generals have grown somewhat of a clique through persuasion and the arguments. And this group even seems to have gained the ear of the Emperor, as it turns out. The ability of the Imperial Army to innovate and surprise our enemies in their flanks, even with our biggest battalions, must be st stimulated so that we may prey upon the men who would rape Russia for her people and resources like wolves and simultaneously quickly and deadly yeah I, I think that's just better overall we lose more population which i don't want but i really have no use for two land auctions i don't even have a use for a land doctrine anymore because we've already researched it all uh i don't want to lose population like i said but special forces 
That'd be good. Even though I don't think I'm even using any special forces. It is what it is, you know. You guys are not considered special forces. Actually, what? Is it just still just mountaineers? Special for what are considered special forces? Do I even have any? I don't think so. They would have that little symbol, so we don't even have any. It is what it is. Um, yeah, hopefully we can get more. We'll get some more manpower once we core these areas, which would be nice. It would be very, very nice, actually. In about four weeks, within a month, we'll have them cored, which would be great. Water tradition, over processing, great. We maybe should focus more on planes as well, but mm, let's see what happens. Uh, resource efficiency gain, how's that coming along? That's not looking very good. Oh, whatever, though. Let's see, 70, we're not quite there yet. Industry radar could be pretty useful. 65, 70, out oh, over here. Or over here, actually, field hospitals might be really nice. You could probably afford field hospitals. We could actually probably use them very well. Do we have any support equipment? Oh, yeah, we got plenty. Just a few more planes, that's all we need. A few more battle tanks, and that's all we need. That'd be great. Encourage, uh, you know what, we might as well take that. It costs money, but it slightly increases GDP, and gives more weekly manpower, which we obviously need. But you know what, I'm glad we took out the Southern Urals. I think that was great. I think that was really great. New schools of thought, great! Celebrate the heroes. Imperial army is nothing without its valiant soldiers. Men who would rather give their very lives in the defense of the emperor and the defense of Russia. Throughout the Western Reclamation, our men gave their all, with some even dying in the field for the country. Andrei Goncharov was... But a fresh recruited private in our ranks when he distinguished himself on the battlefield. His unit was all but scattered to the wind by enemy forces, but he held his ground just long enough for reinforcements to hit the rear of his attackers. He died in the end, but his last words heard out on the radio seemed to be, I'm sorry, Mama, I'm, I'll be home soon. Men like Andre are our backbone, and the Imperial Army must hold them up as beacons of bravery and honor in these times of conflict. Absolutely. <sighs> it's unfortunate for him. Absolutely unfortunate. A needed sacrifice. Hmm. His love for his country. 746 manpower. Uh, we can maybe trade one more away. Oh, no, none delivered. Alright. I don't really want to trade with Japan. Ah, nothing ever went wrong with Kampuchika. Kampuchia. Never. Cambodia never did anything wrong. Never. You can't convince me. Otherwise, no. Fake news. No, no, no. They, they never did anything wrong. Especially systematic organization of removals of people. Never, never. They would never do that. Uh, let's see. India looks pretty sad, honestly, with the Azad Hindu government there. Looks kind of sad. Their top, their little hat there doesn't look very nice. Calcutta. Republic of China is actually doing pretty well for themselves. They actually got all the way to Yunnan, which is pretty good for them, I think. Uh, Empire of Japan, they still own Antai. And Nan close to Nanjing. Guangdong. Oh, is this a demilitarized zone? Macau? Huh. Yeah. How strong are our other Russian enemies? They're probably pretty strong. 48 divisions, which is definitely better than us, because we're out of manpower. Okay, never mind, we got some manpower. Hello. Beautiful, my friends. Beautiful. Go right there. There you go. Add one more if you can. That would be great. Great, 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 great. Finally, more divisions. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I'll throw on the... Uh, oh, man, we could use anti-air. I am trying to make some anti-air. I don't know if it would be really helpful. I mean, I think field hospitals would probably be better now. We're still making anti-air force, but hmm, make more battle tanks then. Keep it on one for now. Do that. Do that too. Do that. Do that. That'd be good. Do that. Do that. Cool. Celebrate the heroes. Oh, uh, we can really establish combat attacks first. The news says that no longer is the WRRF under control of West Russia, but a new and reborn monarchy instead are out, and they spread around the world. While on the home front, we, mu we rebuild and prepare to finally reunite the nation as a whole, we must also make a breakthrough abroad, shaping our image for the people outside of the country and establishing at least the most primitive diplomatic contacts. This is a simple process, yet it requires intensive efforts from em Emperor Vladimir's government and the foreign ministry responsible for these affairs. Embassies will be built and reopened. Trade deals will be drafted and diplomatic visits made. Old contacts we have from the emigrated days will be certainly useful as well to ensure that we are not alone in the struggle for justice and a free Russia. That'd be good. Very, very good. NTS? Uh, not enough support. We still need more support. It looks like we have no fascist support in the Congress, or whatever. Here we have some libertarian socialists, some liberal and conservative democracy folks, and some despotism, but you know what? Authoritarian democracy seems like the best way to go for now. For now. Mm -hmm. Any upgrades for our generals? Oh, maybe. Nikolai? Nikolai? Oh, yeah, definitely that. Who's a ranger? I, I like that. Not bad. Yeah, ranger. I really like ranger. Is that pretty much it? You probably have nothing. Probably got nothing either. Uh, priest here, Orthodox dude, unyielding defender. Yet he's offensive and organized. He's an engineer too. I like that. A little bit of lag. Whatever. 
And we're out of manpower again, it looks like. Oh, 900 manpower. Oh, something's going on. Maybe we'll get a little event here. There we are. Serbia sides with Germany. Look, Serbia remains bounded in chains. Now, that's very interesting, because Italy has, like, Romania, Hungary, I think even Greece and Bulgaria, but Serbia. The Rex Protectorate Prince Eugene Land? What the heck? Sep Yanko. Uh, okay. Return of the Kingdom. Black market trading substantial. I really wish we could get some more stuff here. I want... Uh, I want to increase this even more. Oh, I want a nuclear stockpile. That'd be fun. Zoom in so it lags less. Ready for diplomacy. West Russia is open for business. If you want to read that, go right ahead. The Russian Imperial Navy. Combat schooling. Ooh, more attack. More defense. Minimum training levels. Oh, yeah. I should know this one. Discipline is an important word when considering how well trained an army truly is. A man can know how to shoot and how to drive a tank among the best in the world, but if he cannot follow the orders of the commanders, he is just as likely as any other to end up dead. Our training thus has largely focused on creating good individual soldiers able to take care of orders and fight to be sure, but not to the most effective team players. Our drilling instructors are now being instructed to change the very fabric of their training to focus on new unit focus training to make a more effective modern battalion. Groups of individual soldiers are formidable and have served us extremely well thus far in our reclamation of the West. Groups of soldiers together as a cohesive and flexible unit will be a terrifying force and make up one part of the wave that will use to sweep across Russia and complete her restoration. What is going on here? Ready for diplomacy? Oh, cool. Oh, 70 will not make the same mistakes as their predecessors. Uh... Vlad is the best leader of Russia. Yes, he is. He is open for business. Ooh, more divisions. <gasps> a tank division, yes. And we have RPG Dos. Good. What is this? Thrella? That might be better to get. It is 68, so let's get this one too going. What's that? Outdated equipment. Uh, RPGs. RPG Dos. Very good. We still need a little more rubber, but that's okay. We can't even make any ships. We have no dockyard just because of that. Uh, what are we building? We have three full lines going for two civilian factories and then two, in total, fa military factories. Which is not terrible. We, do, we want to build up a lot more roads, but that's okay. What do I do with political power now? I get two a day? God dang, that's a lot. That is a lot of political power. How is America doing, actually? Ottawa, D.C. Bennett. Conservative democracy. Somewhat unity? Some unity. The American despair. Oh, may God help us all. Huh, okay, well, that is not good. Token civil rights legislation. Okay. And then, last bastion of liberty. Alright, a truly united Congress. Status quo, a truly united Congress, token reform, don't rock the boat. Uh, let's see, leave it to the experts, voices of the people, listen to the stories. Subcommittees upon subcommittees. Through guidance, stability, through change, progress, torch light burns, lady liberty fights on. We are all stronger for the struggle. That's kind of cool. A perfectly broken system. Ah, oh, yes. Ah, oh, good. Our focus is done as well. We have a little bit of debt which I should address. Advanced, advanced developmental subsidies. Ah, oh, yeah. Next up, we shall do... Imperial Russian Navy expands special forces. Uh, Imperial Diplomatic Corps. Let's do that one. So, the fact that the Imperial government is no longer a mere warlord state, we must be represented by our actions on the world stage. Diplomacy was not something we had to worry about when we were confined in Vyatka and surroundings, but now we must begin to show our legitimacy to the world and function as a proper Russian state. The Imperial Diplomatic Corps will be formed by the government as a body that will spearhead our expansion into other countries. Only the most experienced, professional, and above all loyal diplomats should be welcomed into the branch, and that will be head out of Westra. West Russia, in every direction imaginable. Trade deals, pacts, and alliances are all sealed through hard work, a work that the Corps will be responsible for doing. And if they do their job right, then perhaps the Emperor will be recognized once again as the rightful ruler of all of Russia. Which is something that we want, right? That is absolutely something that we want. Let's take a look at this. Let's get rid of this. Oh, horizontal... Uh, stuffy? Goody. Good, good, good. Can't do that. So, uh, even less growth, but more facts, max factories in the state. And get more output, which is always great. Always great. Uh, let's go to this. Pay off the debt. We have 2.38 billion. We have more than enough. I really don't want to invest more money yet. Even though we couldn't do this. If we discuss by 5%. What is 5% of 26 billion? See, deficit is minus 2.9. Deficit is actually 1.82. Wow. Increasing spending costs us quite a bit. But GDP didn't go by that much either. Hmm. Liquid reserves, annual deficit. Ooh, we might not, might not be able to pay that off. Hmm. I might lower construction spending later on then. We'll see what happens. I don't know. As long as we can manage our debt, that's all I care about. Alright, so we got all this stuff. More range. Drop tanks. That's not bad. Uh, interceptors. I'm not using interceptors. I'm using fighters, so let's do that. Yeah, annual deficits. Not good. But the income, though, that's what really matters. Even though, oh, well. 3.9 is not bad. Yeah, we just got we just got more money. Annual expenditures. Annual revenue. Huh. 688 billion. 
It's not enough. I wonder what the depth of the GDP of all these other nations are. Can we see that, actually? Uh, let's see. Central Siberian Federation. Now, that would be really cool if we could see the GDP. That would be good to see in the National Spirits or even in the Intel. Oh, they're weak. Holy... Can I go to war? Please let me go to war. They're weak. Oh, look at their stability. It's so bad. Uh, if you want to read this, go right ahead. And let's choose this one next. Trade with the OFN or European Overtures. Uh, trade with the OFN. The OFN could be said to be the side of the Cold War, which we should be inclined to align with in the future. As a collection of free democratic states, it is the greatest bulwark against the rather authoritarian Reich and the Japan's uh, co-prosperity sphere. Of course, if we say want to establish a relationship with the U.S. and their allies, our past must be forgotten. Something easy, as the monarchy broke the chains of collaboration as soon as it was left alone in the chaotic environment that was West Russia. Once that has been made clear, we can begin to cultivate economic cooperation between the two economies. Our ports in the Iraq Arctic Sea, although they may limit us, will be a hubs of trade as ships come and leave. Special trade deals can be agreed to, and from there, the economic benefit of doing business with the most prosperous of the world powers will be soon apparent. Which is a great thing. Let's see. More research. Uh, grab that. I'm going to immediately throw them on, just because it's going to be so important to get these. Yeah, I don't care how much support we don't have. Sometimes it is better to approach things dip diplomatically. Which is very good. Hopefully we can spend political power to get more stuff. And we're out of manpower again. God dang it. Uh, tanks are doing fine. Support equipment is doing okay as well. We got plenty. Nice. Uh, it's not military spending. It's just because it's civilian spending. We're spending so much. Increase even more spending. Consumer goods. That's okay. So with construction spending going up. We should get some more... Yep, we did get some more consumer goods, which is awesome. Awesome, 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 awesome. Do we really want to increase that right now? We might, actually. You know what? Let's leave one on infrastructure at all time. We're going to leave one on military factories and to continue building up our civilian factories as well. Ooh, what can we do here? Reunification, encourage agricultural mechanization, fine. Iron foreign instructors, yes. It's only the budget, right? And that, that really doesn't cost us that much. 3.91... How do we get even more growth? More growth, more, 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 more growth. I love growth, growth, growth. Ooh, deficit is, went down just a little bit more. That's not bad. Liquid reserve, 7.2 billion. That's not bad. Yeah, I want to grow more, grow more. I want unlimited growth. Unlimited growth and power. Please. Uh, look, we're looking pretty good. Only one elite division, which is fine. We've got plenty of divisions. Please, so no one's going to attack the Siber Central Siberian Federation. That seems like such a mistake right now. These guys aren't too bad either. I'm sure supply sucks really badly here. So, oh, trade with oil on. If you would like to read that, go right ahead. Uh, is there anything else? European overtures? Ties to other people? Sure, why not? The European continent has been a land of monarchies for centuries now. Dozens of dynasties have risen and fallen, all somewhat connected between them. Much like all the royal houses of Europe, though, it's, so is the house of Romanov related to the web of kings and princes in the old continent. With Emperor Vlad having established the monarchist government as a regional power and one of the capable of diplomacy, we can go back to our roots and come into contact with old friends. Even though the victories of Nazi Germany may have upset it and brought down some monarchies, there are still possibilities for diplomatic missions. Soon, Vlad will shake hands with, the, with his equals on the world stage. But perhaps we could even join the OFLN one day. Well, we'll see about that. Let's not jump to conclusions, man. You know, let's not jump to conclusions. This is looking real mighty nice now. Our industry is just coming along very swimmingly. Let's see, reopen universities, great. The Imperial Constitution, great. Plan economy, even better. Uh, Imperial Sp Special Forces, we actually probably should use those. Oh, well. The foreign trade, that's not bad. I like that. That's how we've got more factories. Debt doesn't exist. Oh, yeah. Even better infantry improvements. Great. We're just trying to maximize our infantry's capabilities as best as humanly possible. Which is a good thing. Not enough growth. We could invest in liquid reserves. I mean, yeah, that would be nice, but... I just want to make sure we have a good amount to help offset that deficit. Hmm. Annual revenue. Only six, 96 billion? Oh! Cold days. Quite worrying. Lose stability to get some more support. If you'd like to read this, go right ahead. I mean, it's fine with me. Happy 1969, though. We made it to 69. Nice. Prepare for war. Oh. A grand showdown. Cold days. Oh. The Ural War. I mean, it looks like we're doing pretty much better than they are. Uh, talk of war. Military. Ural military district over there. Uh, development. Yeah, let's go do that one, too. Let's do that one first. Raise additional reserves. Increase preparedness by 15%. Oh, that's a lot of manpower. We have to choose that one. Infiltrate them. Uh, race war support, not bad. Supply chains? Oh my gosh, this is amazing. 300% recon bonus. Wow. Or, research speed bonus. Um, prepare for war. I guess we'll do that. If you want to read that, go right ahead. I'm going to go and click on these stuff, because we need that manpower. Increase preparedness. Infrastructure. Uh, air bases are okay. Air XP is okay. 
increases army XP and preparedness bonus. Oh, wait. What did that cost? Command power, looks like, maybe? You know what? That's fine with me. A grand showdown. Let us see who will stand tall in the end. If you're like, can we just go right ahead? Finally, we're getting some more stuff down here. We'll get the border. New preparedness. Uh, forts. Eh, that's probably pretty good to do. Oh, uh, oh, this all costs command power. I thought it costed, uh... For some, costed? I thought it cost political powers. So I'm like, yeah, just spend all your money. European Overture is great. Ties to the Oil Royals. If you would like to read that, go right ahead. That'll be over there for now. And an embassy in Washington. Swedish Royal Ties. Uh, Imperial Air Service. Factories and okay, yeah, designs. It's not bad. I don't do an embassy in Washington. In our efforts to reestablish relations with the world and earn the Empire foreign recognition, we must do what all nations do in this day and age. Get an embassy in America. West Russia has already proved its willingness to work with other forces of democracy through the trade deals and opening up the business interest. This will be followed by diplomatic attempts to get closer to formal recognition by getting first our embassy. And then, at first, at first, of course, an unofficial consulate designated to facilitate trade between us and the U.S. The plan is for it to slowly evolve into actual diplomatic building through the valiant work of the Imperial Diplomatic Corps. Should we manage to begin cooperation with the USA, then the greater things will surely lie ahead. Yes, absolutely. So 69, we'll give them a deal they can't refuse. Good. Uh, let's see. Our current preparedness is zero. Our preparedness must exceed 75% or more to declare war. Building up higher levels of preparedness before launching our attack may make our situation even more advantageous. Good. And defeat our foe, we must increase our preparedness. Not to leave something as crucial as the existence of our fledging state up to chance. That's good and smart. More funding? Yes. Second inauguration of Wallace F. Bennett. Never heard of him before. All's quiet in America. Until we get involved. Ah, oh, look at that. I like that a lot. I don't want to invest my money into the... It's probably worth, honestly, investing my liquid reserves. But I don't want to use all of my liquid reserves. I wish I could just, like, do half of all my liquid reserves. And then that quarter would actually go to the GDP. I kind of wish you could, like, do that, but whatever. Military spending, decreased construction costs. Yeah, I don't think so. Alright, so let's keep doing this. One there. We still got one going on there, so that's fine. Keep building up roads. Roads, roads, roads. Gives us more resources, more things we can sell, more things we can do. Decrease in poverty. Hey, look at that. We're not so poor anymore. A toast for our economists. If you want to read this, go right ahead. We are now at 25 to 50% poverty rate. So we get actually less monthly population, but we have more recruitable population factor, stability, war support, construction speed, research speed, factory output, doctor output, taxable population factor, and income factor rate. Who wouldn't want that? Uh, air bases. We'll get some more forts. 10%, 10% air base. Yeah, let's get that one. Beautiful. Uh, we aren't quite as poor. I mean, we, don't get us wrong. We're between 25 to 50 percent. But this ain't bad. We were here, but now we're here. We probably get even more money. If we can lower our poverty rate to like five or less than five percent, that it sounds amazing. Cool. Swedish royal ties. A trip to Madrid. Uh, let's do Swedish royal ties. The kingdom of Sweden has been one of the few countries to escape the Second World War unscathed, perhaps owing to their pragmatism. Oh, look at that. If you would really like to read that, then go ahead. Uh, King Gustav VI Adolf has been the monarch of Sweden since the beginning of the 50s, and while he's effectively given of all power he would be given, he still remains an important figurehead of politics and factionalism for the Scandinavian nation. The nation's proximity, combined with his general lack of international alignment with any other major political, geopolitical bloc, makes it a perfect location for a visit by his Imperial Majesty, Emperor Vlad. Traveling by ship, the Emperor would depart from the freezing north in Arkhangelsk and would travel to Sweden for a diplomatic visit. Not only will this possibly give us chances for establishing formal relations with trade agreements, but also increase the Empire's legitimacy. Great. More relations with America. Who would want better relations with the Land of Liberty? Who is actually in a state of despair right now? Hmm. Ooh, good hospitals. Good. And I know these videos go on quite long, but it's it's kind of the only way we can actually get through this. So, sovereignty of Western Russia, not big enough. Come on, get some more command power. We only get 0.78 a day, which is not very good. Begin the invasion, which is going to take some more time, which is fine. Just give me more regional development, please. More, 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 more. I want to help the people out. Money is but a number. <gasps> I asked, and it gave it to me. 132,000 manpower. Woo, I asked. Look how great it is. Just, you just got to ask for manpower. That's all you have to do. You just have to ask for it. Uh, the debt. <sighs> Annual deficits. I'm kind of waiting for the debt to hit so I can actually invest money. I want to get rid of the next thing in debt and then invest more money. Welfare programs? Cool. Heavy machinery or import heavy machinery? Nice. Uses consumer goods, but I don't care. There we go. You know what? Let's invest it. We are almost under 700 billion, and now we're at 716. Cool. Annual deficit 1.77. Not bad. Oh, and we just got more debt. As soon as I get rid of my liquid reserves. Annual revenue is over 100 billion. Total expenditures, though, uh, just a little over 102 billion. 
Swedish royal tithe. I would love to, King Gustav. If you want to read this, go ahead. Go right on ahead. And what you do? Roman holiday. Europe may, or Italy may be the most powerful monarchy in the European continent. Under the House of Savoy, since the days of unification around a century ago, what the Italian empires achieved is wanted glory under King Umberto II. In many ways, it is what we strive to achieve. A strong empire stretching from vast swaths of land, and a beloved and respected king who is not authoritarian, but answers to his people. Rome will certainly be welcome to the emperor of the resurgent nation, especially if we are to become the great next power. It will be a good opportunity to get West Russia's name heard in the world, even if not all believe in the return of the monarchy of old, and this show of goodwill may open the road to a friendship with not only the Italian king, but with the empire as a whole, which is a good thing. It's a great thing, actually. All right, over here. Let's see. Worker training, absolutely. Air base, yes. And then we'll begin the invasion. I'd love to, King Gustav. Good. How's the trade modifier doing? Scientific research, good. It's just money. Just numbers, right? We can pay it off later on. Reunification, not there yet. That's okay. Close you. Open you up. So, not much has changed. Good. National debt is only half a billion, and we have no liquid reserves. You know, whatever. As long as we don't have to pay it back now, we just let the next generation pay for it. And let them suffer the consequences, right? That's okay. Right? That's 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 how it always works. Just push it off into the next generation. Mm, keep building up more resources. That's fine with me. I actually like building up more resources. Uh, and honestly, our supply of goods is pretty good, except for, like, main battle tanks. That's, like, the only thing that we really are lacking now. So, and even then, that requires rubber, which we don't have, I think. Do they require rubber? No, they actually don't require rubber at all. Hmm. All right, well, well whatever. What requires rubber? Oh, planes, duh. Planes, of course, do. Give us even more battle tanks if we need them. That's fine. Uh, no money yet. That's fine. Ooh, the deficit slowly going down. Slowly, slowly, slowly going down. Over here, we have investing construction. We could do that. Roman holiday, great. Will Russia ever be beautiful once again? You bet it will be. And uh, I'll put you over here. A trip to Madrid. So the latest adventure of the diplomatic uh, a core member shall, at the initiative of meeting members of Boris Skorzyev be a diplomatic mission to Madrid. A significant regional power in Europe, the Spanish would be a useful friend to have, and we must approach them in our efforts to make connections with the rest of the world. Granted, the region has seen its fair share of instability and conflict, but it's nothing compared to what we have to go through for years now, just having come out of a warlord era. And while some have pointed out that the troubling past of S and the Iberian Peninsula may cause problems, he himself says that it would be an opportunity to correct his past mistakes and forgive the memories of the Andorran debacle. Let's hope he is correct. Uh, you know what? Spend the money. I'm becoming a big spender right now. Only three quarters of a billion dollars in debt. Can I get paid soon? Iberia abolishes the Iberian Council. Another step back. Good choice. Oh boy. Uh, I guess good choice. Oh no, that does not seem good. Oh, Franco still exists. Part of the loyal, huh? I need to play the Iberian Union sometime. Our loyal advisors. Supremacy of the Caudillos. Peace at last. Oh, that's cool. I hope that they get peaceful. When do I get paid? Is it like April 15th? No, that's tax day in America. Normally. Normally that's tax day. Yeah, our income has actually gone up a little bit more, which is nice. Annual income rate is 22.7%. Nice stuff, my friends. Cool. It's not quite 1970, so we can't invest in the other stuff. Which is fine. Yeah, when do we get paid? That's always a good question. When do you get paid? Well, I get paid at the end of some months. I don't know. We'll see what happens. Yeah. How do we lower an annual debt interest? Can we borrow more money? Can we always borrow more? Oh, wait. Out of their expenditures, go up to half... Oh. When did that get there? We just added, like, $250 million to the debt? When did that happen? Ooh. Decisions? Begin the invasion. A trip to Madrid. Again, why do we have to send him? Cool. Next up, well, we're pretty much done with that, except with our place in the world. So, the last month we've been, has been a process of frantically making moves, both domestically and abroad, to solidify Emperor Vlad's position as a true heir and ruler of the Russian Empire, reborn from its ashes. There have been some difficulties, but that is to be expected. Some have refused to recognize the restoration. Oh boy. Recognition inevitably, but they will soon be left with no choice but to do exactly that. Outside the Russian border, the countries that we have been approached have generally cooperated, and the Imperial Diplomatic Corps has played no small role. It seems as if, despite every hurdle put in front of the Empire to stop it, we have surpassed them all. And we've found our true place in the world as unchallenged rulers of Russia. Good. Winners take all. Oh, boy. And misadventures. Cool. Well, I mean, I guess we're pretty much ready to go. Uh, go and stop training first. Let's do that. Speed up time. Come over here. Uh, let's see. Better cast. Probably. Let time go on first. So we're ready. So Yak 3s. You are fighters, I believe. Transport. Close air support. Fighters. There we go. Begin the invasion. I want my guys to get more uh, organization first, and then we will go to war and then have a good time. I wish we weren't so much in debt, though. Mm. I wish we could get paid, too. Oh, the annual deficit went up barely, but not too much. Alright, how are you guys doing? 
Alright, begin the invasion. In 30 days, in a month, we shall be at war once again. More military factories, for, please, for the people. I'm gonna say it's for the people, even though it's probably not really for the people at all. Two, and then build up another one right there. There we go. Good! Where the tanks support weapons too? Great! Even better defense. Nice. So it looks like overall we probably have more divisions than them. We have 36, almost we have 38 divisions. They have. Oh, never mind, they have 48. Mm. They probably really want to kill us. They probably really, 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 really want to kill us. But that's okay, we really want to kill them too. Mm. I want to get paid, man. That sucks. Man, we spend so much on civilian spending. But that's just because it's a, a, a proportional cost of GDP. That's that. And that. And that. Total expenditures. Cool, mate. It's looking pretty good. Any deficit of equipment at all? Nope, not before we go to war, which is good. And we have a total of 14 days. We will end the episode once we are ready to go. And we get this focus done too. In three days. Ah, if you want to read this, go right ahead. <sighs> Beautiful. Truly amazing, I know. Happy June. Russia will have its rightful place in the world. Great. Next up, uh, the Imperial Russian Navy. It's been almost 40 years since a ship bearing the flag of the Russia, ruled by an emperor, sailed around the northern seas that we call not ours. We should amend this and just by investing in a new, oh, modern Imperial naval force. Dockyards must once again ring with the sound of steel hitting steel to create ships that will be the envy of the seas. There are even many former sailors within our territory that would, give, to take, would take up sailing once again for the right pay with the correct motivation. And they went to war with us. Our newly expanded Russian trade networks with nations outside the Russian quagmire will also benefit from the adding, added protection of a military naval force. We may not be able to match the size of the Japanese or German navies initially, but with the foundation that we will build now, it'll be the way in which we are prepared to once have to reclaim Russia. Glory to the Imperial Navy and glory to the Emperor Vladimir III. Cool, cool, and it looks like they have gone to war with us, in which this is going to end our current episode. If you enjoyed today's episode, consider leaving a like, subscribe if you're new, check my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you all tomorrow as we shall push further east into Siberia. Thanks for watching, have a great rest of your day!